Many people in Holland agree with the ban. They say Fitna is a useless hate-mongering movie insulting Muslims. What would you say to people holding this opinion? I'd ask what happened to the Dutch reputation for tolerance and open-mindedness. Are you only open-minded about things you agree with? And do you ban everything that offends anyone, or is it just Muslims who mustn't be offended? There's more hate expressed in the Quran than in the film, which simply makes the point that Islamic scripture is used by terrorists to justify mass murder. That's a fact and nobody can deny it. A literal reading of the Quran gives Muslims permission to kill people, and those who do so have repeatedly used it as justification. This stuff needs to be acknowledged and discussed, not banned. Nobody wants to offend people, but honest free speech is the oxygen of our society, and I believe that makes it more important than anybody's feelings, however delicate. What is your own opinion on Fitna, and on Mr. Wilder's proposal, to ban the Quran and his comparison between the Quran and Hitler's Mein Kampf? I think the film is a rather sensationalist way of drawing attention to the problem of European Islamization. But the problem is real, and if it had been more honestly acknowledged, and more frankly discussed in the first place there would be no need for a film like this. As for the Quran, I don't think any book should be banned. I didn't know Hitler's book was banned in the Netherlands. I think that's childish. Nobody's opinion should be silenced, even those who would deny the Holocaust. I think everyone should be free to make a public idiot of themselves, if they want to. In your video Shame on Holland you blame the Christian parties and the Dutch government. Didn't you forget the Dutch Labour Party, that is part of the coalition government as well? In that video I actually blamed the multicultural left, but several Dutch people emailed me to say that Christian politicians are also an important part of the problem, so I made that point in the subsequent video Freedom Go to Hell. Some people will say that Wilders, or Anne Hersey or the Danish cartoonist Kurt Westergaard, or our cartoonist Gregorius Nekshit, did you hear about his arrest, or you own person suffer from Islamophobia? What about that? Do you think Islam is now more dangerous for our freedom than other religions? Nobody should worry about being called Islamophobic. Islamophobia is not a real word. It's a crude attempt by multiculturalists and Islamists to play on people's liberal guilt and demonize their legitimate concerns about the direction our society is going. If you dislike something bad it doesn't mean you have a phobia. It means you dislike something bad and you're probably wise to do so. We keep hearing that Islam is falsely portrayed in a bad light, but the evidence shows that it's falsely portrayed in a good light by people who should know better. Also, Islam is more than just a religion. In the guise of Islamism it's an aggressive political movement, and for this reason it is a bigger threat to our freedom than other religions. In your videos you seem very worried about the erosion of words like tolerance and human rights or emancipation. Can you explain a bit why? Tolerance is rightly seen as a virtue, but in practice it has come to mean intolerance of anything that doesn't conform to multicultural dogma. The term human rights was redefined recently by the UN Human Rights Council, after it was hijacked by a cartel of Islamic dictatorships. Now it means immunity from criticism for Islam. Also, they want Western governments to make it illegal to criticize religion, and some seem very eager to do their bidding, including the Dutch government, as we've seen with the prosecution of Mr. Wilders. However, there are signs that things are starting to turn. The Norwegian government tried to introduce such a law last month, but they were forced to back down in the face of outraged public opinion. Bravo Norway. Maybe Europe does have a spine after all. Some people are very pessimistic and think Europe is already surrendering to Islam. Or are you more optimistic, hoping that our continent will come to its senses and recover and fight for its values? I'm optimistic, but it won't happen by itself. Firstly, we still have a vote. I haven't checked recently, so I may be wrong about that. If we vote again for the people who created this situation we deserve everything we get. Secondly, we can only defend freedom of speech if we use it. It's no good as a theory. A silent majority is not a majority at all. If it remains silent, it might as well not exist. If we keep backing away from Islam, if we keep retreating into silence to keep the peace in the face of unreasonable demands, we are in real danger of bequeathing our children the kind of world that we wouldn't want to be born into, a world where ideas are banned and where feelings and dogma are more important than truth, where women have fewer rights, and where homosexuals and Jews have more to fear. Those of us who care about this prospect need to examine our consciences and make a decision to start speaking out before it's too late, because once it is too late, it will be too late forever. What do you think about the recent gains of the BNP in by-elections? I believe the BNP is a racist party, and therefore I don't support them. 
they are getting more support now because the mainstream parties have consistently ignored people's legitimate concerns about multiculturalism and many people feel they've been left with no choice but to vote for them. If politicians listened to what people actually want, the BNP would be nothing. In the last opinion poll, Mr. Wilder scored as the biggest party. The other parties should take off their multicultural spectacles. Maybe those parties will now start saying what they really think and not what they think they are supposed to think.